Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is We're Sinking, A Pirate's Dilemma by Ludimus Games. It plays three to six players for ages 10 and up and takes about 45 to 90 minutes to play. And in the game We're Sinking, the captain has fled the ship. The ship is being attacked by one of many enemies and we as the crew are either going to attempt to allow the ship to sink or we're going to choose to save the ship. Depending on what happens based on the ending of the game, we'll determine how we win the game and we kind of have that option while working together or all by ourselves, but overall for ourselves. The game is going to be played in rounds and in each round each player is going to be receiving, you know, first player is going to be receiving this checklist and you're going to go through the whole checklist. And you're going to have these duties you'll get to complete, whether it's the bucketing out water from the ship, treasure plundering, patching breaches, or firing cannons at the monster. And you can kind of choose to do what you say you're going to do or fib a little. And of course, after the round is over, you'll pass this checklist over to the next player and you'll rinse and repeat. And what's going to happen is at the end of the game, either this entire ship is going to sink into the ocean, quite literally, from uh, one portion to the next portion to the next portion, while treasure is going to fall out into the ocean, or we're going to defeat the monster. Now, in this game, I'm going to be showing you the Kraken, the most basic of the monsters, but there's also skull sayers, sirens, and sharks that we could deal with in this game. Overall, it is a game of cutthroat cunningry, and you will be attempting to either save the ship or just save yourself. In the game, we're sinking. Let's take a look at it. To begin setup for the game we're sinking, the first thing you do is you determine the number of players playing the game. From there, that will determine the number of cards affecting each of the different decks. Take the main game board and place it within reach of all players in the middle of the playing field. And then make the ship. The ship is going to have multiple levels, and in each level you'll have these little plank boards that are our treasures. Place them face down after shuffling them, and set them in each of the different tiers. These tiers represent how far the ship has sunk into the bottom, and when it has hit the last tier and it falls down into the water, that will end the game. The other way is if the monster is defeated. Take all the dice, whether it be the uh, cannon dice, blue ones, and place them on the main game board, and the monster dice, the black and the color of the monsters, and set them off to the side. You'll be making the water deck. This water deck is going to consist of clear water cards as well as treasure cards. Take all the treasures and place them in this deck, minus any of the treasures that are for the specific type of monsters in the game, and remove a number of clear waters based on the number of players playing the game. In a four player game, you'll take out 10 clear water from this deck. Shuffle it and place it on the water deck slot on the left hand side of the game board. Take the cannons that you're not using for the game and set them in, uh, a, in an area somewhere within reach so that you can go ahead and utilize them and add them to your ship if you need to. And then take these guys here, the breach deck, uh, shuffle it up after taking out a minor breach and place it face down on the breach area. The extra breach planks can be set somewhere next to the deck so that they're a reminder that you can use them when you need to. Then you're going to take one card from the water deck and place it face down in the water column area underneath the main game board. Then flip over two treasure cards and place them face up in the plunder area. Patches area is going to have the minor breach as well as a double and single shot busted cannon. And in your cannon area will be a single shot cannon that is fully repaired. You're also going to select one of the cargo hold slash threshold cards based on the number of players playing the game. In this case, we're playing four players, so I have the four player card here, and I have selected level one. I'll take that, slide it in so that you only see level one of the four different levels, and then that way it can be flipped and rotated when need it needs to. Additionally, you'll choose a monster. In this case, I'm choosing the Kraken. The Kraken will come with the purple die, and of course, it will come with a number of these black die to start the game. Each player is going to get a character and that character is going to get a specific card. I have selected Nettie Araneta and she is going to start with a harpoon and I'm also gonna get three additional clear water cards. She's also going to be getting one of these action markers here. These markers are basically what you're going to be uh, selecting when it is your turn to choose what task you want to do. You can obviously say you're going to plunder, but when it gets revealed, it might be in fact a bucket, a patch, or a fire instead. Uh, in which case, you'll be hiding this. And so you'll get th your four cards, your one token marker, your main action card, and of course, one of these cards here, these reference cards that details the legend, aka all the icons that you can utilize in the game, and how to win, whether it be saving the ship or saving yourself. 
Set aside all the rest of the characters, any of the monsters that you're not utilizing, the extra clear water cards, and the rest of the treasure cards you won't use, and then ask players who's the last player to take a swim. The player who was will get this first mate marker, indicating they are the first player for the game, and set this card face up in front of them. They're only going to be the player who starts the game and just goes down the checklist and completes it and then passes up until the game ends. And now we'll talk about how to play. All right, so let's talk about how to play the game we're sinking. But first, let's talk about the way to win. Well, in this game, you have two options, to save the ship or to save yourself. And you can choose either or at the beginning of the game and, of course, mentally change your mind at any point, secretly or verbally if you'd like. Saving the ship allows you to defeat the monster and make sure that the ship doesn't sink. And if that happens, if you have the highest point total of cards in your hand, you can win. The max points you're ever going to have in your hand are based on the number of cards, and the maximum amount of cards you can have in your hand is 10. You'll be checking to see how many cards you have total uh, at a certain point in the game, and if you ever have more than 10, you'll have to discard. So adding up the total value of all of your cards when the monster is defeated is hopefully going to allow you to win the game by having the most. However, saving yourself, well, if the ship is sinking, or if you're trying to make the ship sink, you might want to go for this one instead. Instead of having the most cards with the most amount of points, you want to have the least amount of cards. So whoever has the least amount of cards is the winner. However, there are tiebreakers to this though, so if you have the least amount of cards, let's say that everybody only has one card, it'll be the player who has the most points on that one card that wins the game. Two different ways to win that can change and have a little bit of variability as the game progresses. So let's go ahead and talk about now play. Well, you're going to be using this little duties checklist here. The first mate will go to the player who last took a swim, and they're just going to go through these phases. The inspect phase, the threat phase, the task phase, and upkeep. During the inspect phase, the first thing you're going to do is check for any breaches. You'll look in this breaches column here and you'll see if it has a minor or major breach. For every one of the uh, little water symbols, it looks like a circle with little wavy lines, you're going to add a water to this area here, the water area, the little column down below here. Um, and that could include additional ones, more than just one. It could be two or three, depending on the number of breaches you have here in this column. After you've checked for breaches, you're going to check to see what your water threshold is. Well, on your card, adjacent on the left-hand side to your board, it will tell you the level, your cargo hold. Your threshold of water, which is a number with an arrow next to little wavy lines, and this is six or higher. So if I have six or higher cards here in this water column, that is going to indicate that we now have a problem. We've breached our threshold. And if that happens, we are going to have to check what to do next by looking in the back here. We'll skip that for now. So if it is not, in this case there's only two, then we're going to ignore this portion and we'll move on to the threat phase. During the threat phase, two things happen. The first thing that happens is you'll check your little cargo hold area, your threshold level area, and you will draw cards. First, you'll go to the water area, and it says to draw two, because there are two water cards here. And then it says to draw two treasures. When you do that, you'll flip over cards face up into the treasure column until you've drawn two. If perhaps you do draw a clear water card uh, face up in this column and it's a card that's not a treasure, you're going to take that card and leave it in the water column. So you'll move it from the treasure to the water, which means you're only ever going to have treasure in the treasure area. And it's also possible to gain even more water when pulling for treasure. After you've dealt out water cards and treasure cards, you're going to move on to the roll and resolve enemy dice step. Uh, you're going to first start with a number of purple dice, which will be two here in this case, with two uh, black die for the Kraken. As the Kraken's HP lowers, you'll be adding additional black die to the Kraken to increase its attack, his or her. <laughs> Rolling these dice will determine what the Kraken does. You'll check first the purple die and resolve those, and then you will check the black die. The Kraken is always going to resolve from top to bottom, so its splash effect will happen first, and then the angered attack will happen next. If it's any other symbol, those symbols are basically universal symbols, and you can actually check your legend to determine what that is, whether it be a breach or whether it be uh, damaging one of your cannons. Otherwise, there'll be a special attack that just that specific monster does. The black die are always universal and will affect you after you check to see what the purple die do. Once you've attacked with the Kraken, then you're going to go ahead and um, move on to the next phase, which is the task phase. You'll discard or discuss and declare actions. 
Well, there are four actions that you can take. And what's nice in this game is that your player board illustrates the four different things that you can do. The first thing you can do is bucket, which allows you to draw a card from this water column here, removing water from your ship so that it doesn't sink. And then you can choose to discard one of the cards in your hand, hopefully a card that's not worth any points, if, especially if you're trying to save the ship. If you're the last player to do this action, meaning from top to bottom, bottom in the column, if you're the player who last picks the action, you can actually draw two cards from here and then discard two cards from your hand. Plundering is allowing you to take loot. The uh, first player who plunders, uh, or sorry, if they're the only player who plunders, they'll get all the loot. They'll get a ton of victory points. They'll take every piece of loot in this column, but they're not helping. They're not bucketing water, protecting our breaches, or attacking the Kraken. So it's kind of a rude type of move. If multiple players plunder, you'll split the cards evenly in, in the column among all players. However, if more players than there are cards plunder, you'll discard all the plunder cards. So if there are three plunder cards and all four players plunder, all the cards will go away. If there are four cards and four players plunder, plunder, plunder <laughs> all players will take one card. And if only one player plunder, plunders, man, I cannot say that word, plunders, well, they will take all four cards. The next action is to patch. To patch, you're always gonna draw a card from the water deck, or you'll discard a card from your hand. After you do that, then you'll then get to use your hammer to either patch a breach by removing a breach card and putting it in the bottom of the breach deck, patch a cannon, allowing you to flip over any one of these cannons from the breach area, face up on the bottom of the shot area, the firing area, um, and you could also, or, or you could also take a chest token. The only time you take chest tokens is when the ship starts to sink. These chests will kind of float up out of the bottom of the ship and be placed in the breach area. Otherwise, at the beginning of the game, you won't see any of these chests, so you won't be able to actually take chests. The last action you can do is fire. You'll be able to roll and resolve all cannon dice in the cannon column. You can use each cannon's card ability once if you so choose. In this case, I only have a single shot cannon. I'll take a single shot die, which are the die with these single little pips on them, and I'll roll. If I roll one of these skulls, that will damage the Kraken or whatever enemy, moving the damage marker one to the right for every skull that I get. If I have all three of these cannons here, I could actually roll all three dice, two singles and a double. And then I would check and see. Sometimes you'll get blanks. In fact, oftentimes you will, but sometimes you can get multiple damage. As you damage the Kraken, if the HP marker goes to the black areas on the game board, you'll add one black die during the Kraken attack for each one of the black die that this is adjacent to or farther to the right then. A total of four black die can be used for each of the bad guys as you progress throughout this game. And of course, like I said, the cannons have unique abilities. You can discard and reveal a treasure in which case you'll get to reroll the specific cannon that you're looking to do damage with, because you'll likely draw a lot of blanks from these dice to begin the game with. After you have done that, you're then gonna follow up with upkeep. You'll check to see your hand size. Do you have 10 or less cards? If you do, you're good. Otherwise you have to discard down to 10. And then you'll pass the first mate marker, this guy here, to the left, to the next player, and they're going to start. And you will rinse and repeat this throughout the game. They're going to go throughout the inspecting phase, checking for breaches, adding water, checking the water threshold, so on and so forth. Moving on to the threat phase, where you'll be dealing out water and treasure, rolling and resolving the enemy dice to do even more damage to your ship, discussing what actions you'd like to take, and so on and so forth. Now, there are two unique things about this game that I'm going to discuss a little bit more into detail. The first thing I want to discuss is actions. So I told you the different types of actions that you can take on your turn, right? And starting with the first mate, this player over here, they are actually going to select one of the actions, one of the four that I already discussed with you, and they'll place it down. They'll say, I want to patch. I'm going to place this marker uh, underneath the patch column, the first person. The next player is then going to select something else. They'll say, I would like to bucket some water. I will go ahead and take this marker, place it on bucket secretly, and place it face down. And every player will do this. After that happens, you reveal each of the markers because people can lie. So in which case, you'll start with the left-hand side column, which is water, then you go to treasure, then breaches, and then cannons. So flip it over from top to bottom, left to right, and you'll check to see if anybody lied. 
if the player lied, you'll actually move their marker one over or two or three, whatever, wherever it needs to go, whatever column, and place it at the bottom of that column. So if there's other players, it'll go below them. In this case, this guy actually chose to plunder as opposed to uh, pull out the bu bucket of water and start saving the ship. But this guy did in fact choose to patch, in which case now you resolve the actions going from left to right and top to bottom. The green player will plunder and take all the bonus treasures and add them to his or her hand, and the blue player will patch. So go ahead and I believe it's draw and uh, di draw or discard a card from their hand, and then they'll either patch a breach, patch a cannon, or take a chest. And so that's how actions work in this game. You always can discuss it, you're always going to place it in the column that you say you're going to place it, but then when you reveal, that will determine the actual action that you're going to take. Most of the time people are going to tell the truth, and sometimes people will lie. It really depends on what their aim is in the game. The other thing that I want to talk about in this game, and the last thing, is the cargo hold, the threshold card here. Basically, at certain points in the game, and more often than you'd probably like, the water area here is going to hit the threshold. So, for instance, at uh, the beginning of this a certain phase, the uh, inspect phase, if the number of water cards is equal to or exceeding this number here on the threshold, you're going to flip over the first mate marker here, and you're going to follow the steps here. You'll remove the lowest portion of the ship, thusly showing it sink further down into the water. You'll place the chest tokens in the breach column, you're then going to rotate and flip the water threshold. You'll go from level 1 here, and then you will flip it over to level 2. Level 2 will rotate the card, going to level 3, and then flipping it over to level 4 if needed. In this case, it'll just go to level 2, making the threshold a little higher, but the amount of cards that get dropped, a little more as well. After that, you'll discard all the water cards and treasure card columns. You'll shuffle the water deck and the discard area from the water deck together to create a new water deck. If there are any breaches in this column here, you're going to discard them, but you're going to gain a permanent breach. These are things that you cannot get rid of. They'll get placed in the column here, and they will always add one water every single time the breach thing calls for it, the inspect action phase calls for it. So more of these permanent breaches equals more trouble because you can never repair them. And then after that, you'll flip over and continue with phase three, moving to the dealing out water and treasure cards. And that is how this works. So the end of the game happens where either A, this ship ends up going here and like completely sinking and the game is then over, um, or if the Kraken or the Shark or one of the many other bosses, HP marker goes to the Skull section. In which case, I believe the round finishes, and then you'll check to see who won. Whether it be having uh, 10 cards in hand with as many points as possible because you managed to save the ship and defeat the monster, or the ship has unfortunately sunk down into the ocean, and you've escaped with just one card worth one point. Which, everybody else has more cards, so you're the winner in that way. And that's the game we're sinking. That's how it's played, at least. Worst Thinking is a cooperative, competitive game. It's a game where you're working together to complete one of the two goals. T sometimes players will work together to make sure that the ship sinks. Other times they'll work together to defeat the monster. And sometimes they'll change their mind in between, allowing you to kind of make up your own decisions as the game progresses based on how well you think we're doing. If players are not working cooperatively, it's very likely that you're not going to manage to defeat the monster, and in fact your ship will sink, so then it comes down to players hustling really quickly to empty their hands and keep a card with high points, or to completely empty their hands, really just depending on how much effort they put into saving the ship to begin the game with. I like the idea of working cooperatively, but also having your kind of own objective at the end of the game, while also on the opposite end, working um, competitively to kind of sink the ship if you think it's not possible to defeat the Kraken, because these dice do require a bit of luck. What's also cool about this game, too, is the cards here. These treasure cards are going to give you victory points. There'll be a, a certain variety of treasure cards that you'll be utilizing the game, whether it be something like a Topaz, which has seven in the deck, and they're worth three points at the end of the game, or something like this Sapphire, which there are only five in this deck, and they're worth four points. Otherwise, you could actually use some action cards, and the action cards will say certain things like, whenever you resolve the bucket action, you can resolve this card as well, allowing you to reveal a card in the water column, and if it's a treasure, you can add it to your hand. So there are a vast variety of ways in which you can take additional bonus actions with the treasure cards in your hand that maybe are not worth points, but can give you a unique bonus action that can let you delve into the treasure deck to gather more valuable resources. The bluffing aspect of the game of saying you're going to help, and in fact hurting, is kind of a dangerous move, 
move but can benefit you one way or another. Choosing to play on the sly and work towards the greater good up until the point where they realize that you're not actually working. And in fact, all the cards in your hand are action cards, which you then play out to remove to get rid of the cards from your hand so that you can kind of dump this guy here, um, is a benefit as well. This game is really, really cool. I love the fact that there are unique monsters. Each monster has their own unique set of two dice and each of the monsters has their own unique abilities. Whether you're playing against like the uh, Skull Sayers or the Kraken or the Sharks, they'll actually come with unique cards. Maybe there's gonna be additional cursed amulets inside this deck that the more you collect, the more value that they're worth. Or you're using things like Fishbait and Cheeky Chum. Each of the different monsters can have different cards. Uh, in addition, there are more dangerous breaches that you can add to the game when you're playing with more players, and you'll also add more clear water. The ship does eventually start uh, stacking up, and in fact, if you watched our playthrough, we played it um, on easy mode, because what we didn't factor in was the number of treasure cards that you need. If you need three, you flip over three cards and one's a clear water. That water will go over to the water deck, and you have to flip over another, up until you get three treasures. So you have to meet that threshold of whatever this says here on this threshold area before you can move on to the next step. The quality of this game is excellent. The game is beautiful. I love the ship. I love the markers that you're gonna be utilizing moving around. It feels good to place down. It's got a really great tactile feel to it. Um, everything about this in theme works wonderful. Each of the different actions feels like you're taking part in a pirate ship, whether it's bucketing water, plundering the treasure, patching up breaches from the Kraken, or firing cannons at the monster. And having the choice to do any of them with also bonus actions that you can take from your hand is fun. The little light amount of luck involved in this game is normally, I would say, a bad thing with games. You're rolling dice and you just happen to always roll blanks, so you can't win. You can't defeat the Kraken. That's okay, though. Your game isn't to defeat the Kraken. Your game is to win. Whether that be to defeat the Kraken or not, it doesn't really matter. And you have to kind of factor in how well the luck is going and how much you want to mitigate that luck and how you roll your die. How much treasure you'll give up to utilize the cannons an additional time to hopefully hit the coveted skull symbol to do an extra damage to the Kraken. You get to decide, and of course remember that defeating the Kraken means you need to have those victory points in hand, and so they're a coveted resource. It's dangerous to remove cards from your hand to defeat this guy, but also maybe you have too many cards to win the opposite way. So you're left in a little bit of a conundrum. And there is some great like, like feeling of like, how much do I want to push? How much can I push? Is it worth it? Eh. Some players, in fact, are just interested in defeating the Kraken. They don't even care about winning the game, so they're willing to sacrifice themselves, which is not going to be me. But I do appreciate them as I covetly collect all the cards and treasures into my hand. Overall quality, artwork, theme, and style is perfectly attached to this game. It feels similar uh, to other pirate games, but also extremely different in, in like the theme of fighting monsters and sailing the seven seas and collecting plunder. It's got that theme attached to it, but the way the game, the mechanics work, the fact that you're working cooperatively sometimes and aggressively with each other at other times has this weird feeling. Each round is different too. It doesn't feel like me and you are buddies now and we'll be buddies forever. It's every round is different. And if somebody screws you over the first round, if you hold that grudge the whole game, you're probably gonna lose to the monster. So you kind of have to forgive and forget each round from round to round. Swirse Thinking is an excellent pirate game with unique bluffing, deducing on what you should do next, going left or right, sinking or swimming kind of thing. And it has enough variability with unique monsters and of course, just the players playing with you to ever change this game. I really, really love this game. This is definitely a game I'd suggest picking up. It's one of my favorite pirate games of the year, and I've played a lot of them this year. It's light, it's simple, with enough complexity and enough variation to keep me interested for at least the rest of the year, if not putting it directly into my collection. So do check out We're Sinking. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game We're Sinking by Ludimus Games. If you're interested, there's a link down below where you can purchase the game for yourself. And I do, like I said, highly recommend this game. It is a lot of fun. You can also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. And in fact, we did play this game, but we got a few rules wrong. The first one being that when you repair things, you can choose whatever you want to repair and place it in the bottom. And whenever you destroy them, it's always going to be from the top portion. And then whenever you meet thresholds, you must push all the way through. Two water cards face down from the deck will go down here in this column, and three treasure cards must come out with all water cards going to the left until you can move on to the next portion. 
overall, I hope you guys had a good time with this video as well as this game. If you've never played this game, I strongly suggest you at least give it a try because we had a ton of fun with it. Thank you guys so much. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, I look forward to sinking or defeating the Kraken with you next time.